Hello and welcome back. So just a note on these videos. Uh, this is a combination of videos I made on the James Summerton situation. And what I want to say is uh, these videos were made before the Twitter revelation. I've made a follow up to that. And uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, these aren't the best videos, I don't think. But they're from the channel before the hacking. And I'm still disheartened. Ignore the mess. But I hope you guys like them. And I hope you guys enjoy them. It just kind of gives you what went down, my opinions of everything that went down before other stuff happened. So I hope you guys enjoy. Hello and welcome back. Like, sub and do the usual. I think you guys know what this video is about, just going on the title alone. And I'm going to preface this with two things. A. I got accused of jumping on a bandwagon against James Summerton in my comments. Although I did hint at these details, but I didn't want to go in them. Because the blog post that was heavily borrowed by him is not something I'm proud of now, but it was something I was proud of once. So that's, that's a thing. And it took a lot of work. So just purely on the work alone, I still hold a sense of pride for it, although my opinions have changed. Two. There is nothing I can do about this. <laughs> I've tried, and it's been frustrating. So let's talk about it. And I will also add, I'm somewhat going on caffeine, and I'm sitting in a barn. So if you hear horses behind me, I apologise. Recently, well, recently, I found out part of my work had fallen victim to the practice of plagiarism at the hands of Jane Summerton. Um, I also wanted to about my interactions with him and how he shamelessly plagiarised parts of my original blog on the literary masterpiece that is The Lord of the Rings. I stumbled upon his video when it first dropped where he made a couple of Lord of the Rings based videos and jumped on the Rings of Power bandwagon for views. I couldn't sh shake off the feeling of deja vu. And it soon became very apparent that James had borrowed some ideas of my work, but also, but also outright copied a small part of it verbatim, without providing any credit or acknowledgement. And I mean, it was a small part, with a word changed. My original blog was a labour of love, and it took to write that piece on the hobbits and the elves and countless other things with Middle Earth, it took me a very long time. In those days I wrote things longhand and then tr typed them into the blog, piecing together fragments of what I wrote to create this. My opinions have changed since that original blog was written and it's not something now that I look back on and go, oh this is amazing, we need to revisit it. No, I look back on it and think I tried very hard and it was a good try. Sorry for the sombre mood of this video. I will say that. In stark contrast, uh, Summerton's video lacked the authenticity and depth that char characterised at least some of my work. The one paragraph was listed ho lifted wholesale from my blog, with minimal alterations to intense the dis in attempt to disguise the blatant plagiarism. It was evident Summerton had put no work and effort into producing original content, but instead opted to steal from creative others. This is true, and I will also say that what he took from me was reasonably small. It was a paragraph. It Compared to what some people dealt with with that guy, I it seems really insignificant in the big scheme of things, and, you know, that's a thing. Although we shouldn't, you know, devalue the weight of this, I think. Oh dear God. <clears throat> the discovery of this plagiarism was not merely a matter of intel intelligent property infringement. It struck me at my core of creative integrity. I try and write. We pour out, we all do, we pour our hearts and souls into work, seeking to share our unique perspectives with the world, and plagiarism definitely undermines that endeavour. And it really stung. 
Confronting James. Armed with evidence of the plagiarism, I reached out to James Summerton to address the issue. While initially denying any wrongdoing, the overall the overwhelming similarities between our perspective posts left little room for doubt. Despite being confronted with the truth, Summerton offered no apology or explanation for his actions and then blocked me, further underscoring the severity of the issue. Little did I know that sometime after that he unblocked me because suddenly I could see all his posts again. I think he hoped I would just forget it because I was a nobody on the internet, to quote him. The few replies he gave me was disheartening, vile, and he even sent some of his friends after me. In light of Summerton's refusal to acknowledge the plagiarism, I am left with little choice but to bring the matter to light and hold him accountable for his actions. Everybody did. I mean, H. Bomber Guy's video was fantastic, and plagiarism is not a victimless crime. It tarnishes the reputation of both the person that created, that plagiarized and the original creator, and it casts a shadow, a huge shadow of doubt over the integrity of both sides of the work. James was extremely submissive and extremely uh, rude, and there's no way to be nice about that. The case of James Sunton's plagiarism serves as a sobering reminder of the importance of ethical contact, conduct within creative realms. What I found frustrating over the whole experience was I tried to deal with this I didn't mind him borrowing a piece of my work. I didn't mind him doing anything like that, but just some credit would have been nice. But James, as he said, I was a nobody on the internet. Who cares? I will never forgive him for those replies. James is a raging narcissist with an attitude problem that needs severe adjustment. He did uh, an apology video that was not only one of the cringiest things I've ever seen in my life, but genuinely one of the most pitiful things I've ever seen in my life. A pathetic creature falling apart on camera, how he is the victim, and how everyone else did it but him. James Summerton is a human parasite with little to no value of his existence, and I genuinely hope he has the day that he deserves. I didn't jump on bandwagons, I didn't do it for clicks, I did it because I wanted to talk about it. I even said in those videos that he even ripped me off, but apparently that wasn't good enough. I won't lie, the internet is filled with human trash, and Summerton is one of them. And it's unfortunate I can't do anything. My big regret is after I found out about the plagiarism, I asked for the Internet Archive to delete that blog. And they were kind enough to accept. I'm sure there are other copies of it anywhere, but I can't find it. All I have are some scribbled notes in a notebook, which ironically has cats on it for some reason. And <laughs> here I am. I don't know. I won't get anything back from this. I won't. And what he did to me was reasonably minor in comparison to others. I just hope the people that were affected get something, get an apology, get something more than a half-baked attempt to look meek and victimful. James Summerton deserves everything he gets. And I'm going to leave this video here. I will talk to you later. And I'm sorry if this video seems serious and dark, but it's a serious and dark topic. Have a wonderful day. The James Summerton apology video came out. And I don't know where it's viewable because it seems to be on weird channels that aren't him. So there's plenty of people talking about it. So, it's a very unusual video to watch, and I don't really want to talk about the beginning of the video. Because there was... I, I, I don't want to question that. 
I, I want to talk about just the channel and his sort of reaction and things. So first things first, uh, plagiarism. He talked about the plagiarism. And I feel like he... He didn't quite own it. He did take some responsibility. But the apology video is middling. It's not, I was expecting a ukulele. It's uncomfortable viewing in places because he's desperately trying to think what to say and keep something quite neutral. But ultimately, I, I felt like it was not completely accurate. There was a lot of passing the blame to the writer. There was a lot of the other writer. There was a lot of, well, I should have checked it. But that's the thing, when we live in an age where I can Google something on my phone and it will be there, and there are multiple sources. He talked about when he did credit people in the past in certain videos, but what I found strange about that one was he breezed over some stuff, like, for example, getting called out for plagiarism and not crediting people and then re-uploading stuff. That, that was interesting. Then, then there was the best way to describe it. He, he was very disconnected, his body language from that video. And I don't know if it was, I don't know if that body language was um, intentional, but it felt kind of, yeah. He later deleted this video, which I found to be sus. Um, again, I found it through a third party source. There was, it was interesting. He did address the accusations of setting up Nick as a Fall Guys co-writer. Um, but it just felt, I don't know. It didn't feel quite right. Like I've, it wasn't a bad apology, but I think there's a side of him psychologically that doesn't want to admit what he did. He did talk about the pseudo history and said I should have done more research or or I didn't I look I researched the wrong facts and or I didn't write it. Which again, in this day and age, it's so easy to cross reference stuff. Again, first hand accounts. He didn't address his views on women because he tended to I always find it quite strange um but he has this very bizarre reaction also he didn't address his own audience where he has been known to send or his fans subconsciously go after like any criticism he plays the victim it's It's bizarre. I think the video was a mistake to upload because I don't think it did him any favours. And the thing is, and this is something I should should have said at the beginning, the whole thing about a YouTube channel is that when you create content, you're the public face of it. So regardless of who is behind you, it will always take something from you. People don't associate your content with another writer. They don't. It's it's psychological. It's fascinating and frustrating sometimes. But I think he's done as a content creator. He did talk about wanting to do more content and starting videos and doing all of this stuff and making sure that's credited. The problem is I think his reputation has been burned. 
my experiences with James as an onlooker have never been particularly pleasant. Um, he's gone after a few people I know online who dare criticise him. And I don't know if this is coming straight from a narcissist playbook or someone that is genuinely sorry. I, I feel like this video was... This video was a uh, mistake, and I don't think he. I don't think it had the desired reaction. I think the problem is once narcissists are caught out, once people who are pathologically on in doing stuff for their own stuff, they either go into attack mode, or they do this. And that's a fascinatingly bizarre thing to watch. Like, I say that I've made mistakes as a content creator and I've held my hands up to them. But this is what not to do. I think the fact that now we're at the point where there were people... Um, there were people um, citing his videos as actual sources for information and now that's become a whole thing it's this is not good this is this is free fall ironically Blair of the Illuminati should have taken something out of his playbook but I don't know how genuine this video is because it felt like a half apology, half passing the blame onto other people and half trying to make himself look good. Oh, thirds. You know what I mean. I think regardless of how genuine any of this is and how real any of this is, I think at this point it would be a huge mistake to come back. He also talked about re making the videos public again and giving the AdSense to people. Um, which, you know what? If he did that, I would actually have um, a little more respect. But so far, nothing's public. And there are other rumours flying around. There was a lot to address that he didn't do. And there was a lot of people that I think he's hurt. I will say some of the people were a little bit vicious in talking about him. And I will say that. I think I think there is a line from personal attack to genuine criticism. And I think a lot of people don't know that line. I don't know him from Adam. I'm criticising his behaviour as a content creator, not him as a person, because I don't know him. I only know his public image. So I do wonder what happens next. But he swiftly deleted that video. And that, I think, is um, telling. Because I don't think it got the reaction he was hoping for. And that's simple. There is one aspect of the James Summerton thing that fascinates me. And I've seen people do this. I see it in the Rings of Power fan base as well. And other things, Star Wars and Disney and Marvel. Pseudo history. And I say this. I'm going to use the Wikituber art. Here we go. I'm going to be using the James Summerton article from youtube.fandom.com slash wiki um, <laughs> because it's fascinating and it goes to Todd in the Shadows so here's a section from that Todd in the Shadows knew of Summerton as the plagiarism guy air quotes for some time before he decided to watch one of his videos in 23 now I remember this going down Todd watched Summerton's video, Why Bad Gays Are Good, and generally applaud by Summerton's writings. 
He was particularly offended by Sumpton's claims that all the good gays had died during world during the AIDS crisis, and those who remained were assimilated sellouts. Can we just take that line in, please? Because I think that's shockingly offensive and kind of disgusting. On every level, that that is disgusting. <laughs> Uh, Todd subtweeted about the video, but was surprised at the pushback from Summerton's fans, which prompted him to hate watch Summerton's videos to try and understand what bought um, Summerton's such a uh, savage following. I mean, Summerton's fan base was uh, vicious, and there are people still defending him and making excuses for what went down. And. At some point during this, he and H. Bomber Guy, I still find that name really weird to say, learned of each other's videos and agreed to continue their, on their own on the condition uh, Harris would be allowed to release first. Okay. Since he had uh, began the investigation before. Uh, Todd released a two-hour video entitled I Fact Check the Worst Video Essayers on YouTube. The video focused on numerous pseudo-histories passed off as fact, factual representation of historical events, including numerous or even outright false claims that were both world history and media history that he had spread by fact to his audience. I love the wiki. I do love the wiki. Wikitube is one of, like, one of my favourite things. Uh, they point out some claims here. These claim these included claims that lesbians were less affected by cultural homophobia than gay men and even benefited from it in places. Who? Hi <laughs> guy. I'm cringing reading this. I'm I'm absolutely dying on the inside reading this. God. The Nazi party and the Hitler youth were full of homosexuals. 90s and noughties queer activists only cared about marriage equality because they were conservative. Modern companies spread most of their budget buying and bearing new technologies. China is a major negative influence on global film industry. I, I will say I actually agree with that claim. <laughs> But not in not in that direct line because it's not the full film industry. That's a whole different discussion. I agree and disagree with that one. Oh boy, uh, straight women had complaints and even harassed him about gay romance sex scenes in Yowie on Yuri on Ice and Red, White, and Royal Blue. Uh, Todd noticed that Harris went out of his way in the retrospective video to be kind. As he found signs that some of them had planned to use countless, uh, basically as a scapegoat for his plagiarism claims, his writer, Nick. Ah, uh, God. <laughs> I mean, this is the thing. You can Google this stuff. And you can find that it's fake. I think... And I will say this. I think the writer... Uh, Nick was at least irresponsible when working with Summerton. I think that's a true statement. I think that's echoed in the wiki article and that's something I say. And now the whole thing is going down. I mean, pseudo history is a very dangerous thing for a very simple reason. It, a lot of YouTubers and content creators were using Summerton as a source, were using his videos, his information as a source for their videos and their information. And I find that bizarre to witness. I looked for evidence of all this stuff, and why I, like I said, I do kind of agree to a certain point in sort of mainstream, very mainstream movies that China is a negative influence. Um, 
I find it interesting that for to- uh, for Summerton, it was every film was affected by China, even films that weren't released there. It was this big thing. Um, I'm trying to couch this language, and I do apologise because I know what it's like on here. But I guess I'm just going to have to roll in it. Uh, the misogyny claims were fascinating as well. His sort of hatred of what he used the term straight white women and teenage girls. But <clears throat> I do find it fascinating to witness. Uh, the fact that he falsely claimed lesbians benefit from societal discomfort around the idea of female homosexuality, even as far to say that a court case against the book The Wall of Loneliness was thrown out because the court didn't wish to discuss lesbianism. Oh my god. Like, it's fascinating that the whole thing, like, there's there's other allegations which I'll talk about, but you have to be very, very careful when presenting history. And I will say, I have got things wrong, but I always do a correction, or I'll go back and I'll twit- take that little bit of the video out, or I misspeak. That happens. But the fact that major people were using Summerton's videos as a source of information, whatever happened to Googling things for yourself? Just, can we put that one out there? Whatever happened to research departments? Like, these channels have teams of people. Now, other lies. <laughs> Educational history. Again, we're going to the uh, fandom YouTube wiki thing, which I will link below. James would describe himself as a marketing expert and claimed on his LinkedIn that he graduated from Mount St. Vincent University with an associate's degree and uh, another university with a master's degree in business. However, it was later <laughs> that he never graduated from there. He has never seen or mentioned its graduation ceremony. It is unknown if he actually attended the institute or any significant kind. And then there were the catfishing stuff. And these are all allegations. Oh boy. <clears throat> on H Bomber Guy's subreddit, a few redditors users claim that their personal experience with James. One of them stated that they met on Grinder, and James highlighted his fragile nature. Oh god, and catfished them on Grinder. This is just gross. This is actually making my skin crawl. Like this stuff makes me uncomfortable because it's so easy to lie about yourself on the internet and be someone else. The user alleged allege more about James catfishing and convinced them to do things on camera while posing as their user's hot best friend. Oh my god. Oh. I literally, as I read this, my brain is just liquefying because... I say this, integrity, especially when it comes to historical stuff, history, people, places, like, <clears throat> why? And I, I think I've said this before, that I think James was never in it about his stuff. He was never in it about history, he was never about this stuff. He just used people. And saw his channel as a way of satisfying his own ego, if that makes sense. That's that's the best way to describe it. I've met people like him. Their channels are not... Their channels are not about what they're talking about. They're about them. And it is kind of unfortunate that it has come to this. Because there are some fantastic people on YouTube, and I think this affects everyone else because it makes everyone uneasy about other content creators. Are these people telling the truth? Are these people doing this? Are they real? And I think to present historical, inaccurate historical information as fact is extremely dangerous. It's just... It's bizarre isn't it 
like the fact that this stuff is so easily checked and I always say this if you're watching someone on YouTube do check their information just just check it it's safer that way but it was so bizarre to watch and I, I remember a lot of stuff going down and a lot of um, in hindsight a lot of stuff just kind of happened and you know, a vicious fan base that will defend you with their lies, defend you with their lives, even if they're proven to be lying. And there are still a handful of people defending him. Not many, though. That number is progressively dropping because there's no culpability. There's no, there's nothing in the stakes for these people anymore. James Sunderson proved <clears throat> what many people had been saying for a very long time about him and i say this h bummer guy is not he's not the type of content i watch i i will say that it's not my type of content but and i mean this i think he did the world a service i think todd in the shadows did a good job as well again not my type of content but fascinating <laughs> and like i said you can talk about a youtube channel and uh, engage with content without necessarily being a huge fan of the people involved. But I think James Summerton, um, I think James Summerton is, uh, reflects badly on a lot of people. And I hope the channels that used him as sources say something. And I hope the people that he ripped off, I hope the people that he completely plagiarized um, and all of this stuff get what, get something be it financial be it uh, something because i think it's kind of gross um i'm just sitting here watching this go down from afar and it, every time i look him up it seems to get worse so i'm going to leave this here i will link to the wiki article in the description and in the first comment so if you guys are interested please read that it's actually quite fascinating and I will talk to you guys later. Do check out um, a few of the subreddits I mentioned as well. Welcome back. So, not that long ago, I did a video on James Summerton's apology video. And it was very much a non-apology. Let's be real here. So I wanted to look at it in a deeper sense and just, just go that little bit deeper and a little bit more into it and more into my thoughts and feelings on the subject matter. So let's talk about it. Uh, James Summerton was found out to be a plagiarist within YouTube and it showed. There is no if buts and maybes about it. He showed what he really was and I have a lot of thoughts and theories. I'm not going to show the video, it's on YouTube already, you can find it. But, I want to say this, I, I have very mixed feelings on this apology. But it was very clearly an act of manipulation. So, the apology starts with a look at what he apparently attempted to do. Which, I don't know if it's necessarily true or not, and I don't really want to go into that subject matter. Because, you know private stuff and if it is true that's horrible and if it's not that's equally as horrible in this context now we're at the point of James is intentionally in my opinion manipulating the audience he trauma dumps and jumps around different moments and emotions within the context of what happened and that's obviously kind of incoherent he's barely making eye contact with the camera and he he's crying but i don't think it's real tears the emotional disconnect in his body language to what he's presenting is fundamentally very different and that shows you can see it in his movements you can see it in the way his eye contact you can see it in the way everything is intentionally held now you have him 
and I'm looking at the video as we go, I will link to the video below because I think that's quite an interesting one. I'll put it in the comments, but the, it will be pinned. But when you watch it, the, the disconnect in his movements, the disconnect in what he's actually saying, the disconnect in how he's saying it to what he's presenting on screen is massive. There's no correlation and there's no emotional resonance between what's happening and how it's happening. It's weird to watch because it's very clearly designed for a reaction. It's clearly designed to make people feel sorry for James. And the sort of sympathy fishing that's going on is something that always makes me very uncomfortable. And you see it. I do find it... I do find it interesting just looking at my notes with it. What I find is that people, narcissists, when they get called out, when their behaviour breaks, when the truth is revealed, they do two things, one of two things, they either run and hide, or they come out and do this, and it's, it was a strange one watching him attempt to throw people under the bus, it was uncomfortable viewing, actually, the whole, everything, actually, it was extremely, um, the only word I've got for it is when you watch someone and their emotional resonance on screen and what they're saying and their actions, when they don't line up, it's almost a little bit of an uncanny valley thing going on. It's very obvious and very, very apparent. There's no connection. There's no emotional connection. There's nothing there that actually makes me think what he's saying is real and what he's saying is believable. I don't even think he believes it at this point. And when narcissists come into certain spaces, be it career, be it content creation, be it whatever, they're not doing it for content creation. They're not doing it for... Um, those moments. They're not doing it to build a community or get or talk to people. They're doing it for self-serving means. He's lost a financial support that he got from YouTube, Patreon, and YouTube ad revenue because channel was demonetized. And then you have a, a person who is in free fall. And watching it is just fascinating. Sort of seeing the the death of his channel is fascinating. Um, you can see when he went private. You can see how many subscribers he's lost over the last few weeks. I mean, it's huge. And it is a genuine freefall. He's lost a huge quantity of those people and his audience and the people that validated him. And people like that, and I've talked about it before, want validation. They want someone to tell them how amazing they are and what they do and how they do it. If he got called out on his behaviour, he would always play the victim. He would use his sexuality as a shield. And he also didn't cover many of the other allegations. His attitudes towards women, for example, is kind of disturbing. And he didn't cover half the stuff. He threw his co-writer under the bars. But my belief is that, regardless of who actually created it, it was atrocious and he's the public face of it and it was up to him to make everything factual pseudo history is one thing outright lying is another and then we have full-blown plagiarism and then he posted something on the community post 
Earlier today I uploaded a video apologising for what I've done, but it became clear after hearing from several people that I'm not in a healthy frame of mind to be posting anything online. I only returned home from hospital yesterday, so I should never have filmed it. I have deleted the video, but I'm sure it's been downloaded and will be shared by other, others online. I promise to apologise properly and in detail when I'm, in a more ment when I'm more mentally stable. Until then, please know that I am, in capital letters, sorry. The thing is, once you lose the trust of your audience, once you lose that thing, once once that breaks, that's it. There is no coming back. And the fact that he deleted everything, he went private, the fact that he talked so much about stuff that had happened in trying to deflect the criticism and how it affected him, but not talking openly about how it affected others. He outright stole from people and created this thing, and his behaviour online was downright toxic. And I've seen that firsthand. His Twitter feed was a mess. James Summerton, I firmly believe, should just step away. He also talked about giving the money back in the end of the video. But the problem is, he then deflected it and saying, well, living in Toronto. What is it with Canada, by the way, and just weirdos? The, the whole thing was this bizarre rat's nest of... <laughs> this whole situation was just this rat's nest and it was waiting to burst. And ultimately, he made a rod for his own back. It's his fault. And trying to deflect and blame others for things that would be very easily checked are just... It just screamed of someone who was desperate. And look how ill I've been. Look how this I've been. The apology video wasn't about being sorry. This is my opinion. It was purely about... I need some validation, I need to know that people still like me. But the roll-on effect of this is that there are channels and YouTubers that have used him as a source for their information and stuff that's easily available on the internet. The apology video was, in my opinion, mine solely, and I know this is not going to be very popular, but in my opinion, his apology video existed purely to try and make people feel sorry for him. That was it. So, I have no sympathy for anything because he made a rod for his own back. So, tell me what you think in the comments below. I will talk to you guys later. And I will say I do apologise for that first video I made because it wasn't my best work. It was recorded in a barn and I didn't have a huge amount of time to do it and I was working from notes. This I'm actually working from a script, so hi. Uh, I will talk to you guys later and thank you for being in this weird little place on the internet for me. It's... I'm glad that you guys like what I'm doing and um, there's obviously a few people that don't, so that's always a fun one. Hello, it's 5am when I'm filming this and yesterday Jane Summerton made a comeback and got roasted alive. James Summerton, who spent, at what, a 45 minute video, basically for the first half hour blaming everyone else and coming up with every excuse possible, be it family situation, be it mental health, and I don't necessarily believe any of that. Then the lines came out of his mouth that just make me cringe. He wanted to be the voice of the rainbow community by stealing rainbow communities work. Mine included, by the way. <laughs> like, can we just talk about this? The video is pitiful. I half expected him to bring out a ukulele and start singing. He's also using filters, by the way, just putting that one out there. And there was no accountability. There was no there was nothing. It was it was dry. It was painful. It was everyone else's fault but his own. And watching it, and I, I, if you want to watch it, 
without giving him numbers, I will put a link down below to another website. That's all I'm going to say. James is trash. <laughs> and I swear he is the human equivalent of a cockroach right now. Because, let's be honest here, a nuclear bomb couldn't get rid of this guy. Like, no one wants him here. He's He deleted all the less... He deleted a lot of comments, including Todd in the Shadows. I still can't get over Todd's video. The fact that Todd, a music reviewer, came out and did that was amazing. And then he... Then he's deleted anything that's quite just generally harsh criticism. There's something severely wrong. Oh, and he directed people to his new Patreon. He directed people to his new Patreon account to give him money. I'm sorry, but this guy has no self-awareness. He lives in this weird bubble where he is the victim. He has openly harassed people and sent his followers to people. He's... I... My brain is exploding just thinking about the guts it took to do this video. And I watched it and I was like, Chat GBT could write a better apology for than he did. And the, the irony is, from this point on, he's going to be under the tiniest microscope you can imagine. And anything even remotely similar. I don't think James is capable of an original thought. The fact that he sat on that camera unironically saying, I want to be the voice of the gay and the queer community. You're not my voice. <laughs> I have my own. Shut up. It, just, just shut up. Go away, James. No one wants you. I, I have no sympathy. I don't believe anything that you said in that video. I don't believe a thing. Then he was like, well, I'm going to give the money to these people and do this and do that. Come on. Do you really think your audience are that stupid? Going by the people that defended you, then yes. This video was a half-baked, egotistical narcissist crying at the camera how he is a victim and how it's so hard. I'm just going to put this one into the mix as, as someone that kind of gets sick of being used by people. You used a paragraph from my thing, from an archive. And the stuff that people found, and I'm sure there is more of it, because your old videos are circulating the internet right now. And people are going to micro-examine everything you do. No one wanted you to come back. I didn't. Comment section didn't. You hit the like to dislike ratio. <laughs> but by the way, you can see that with a plug-in and it's absolutely hilarious. The man's getting ratioed into oblivion. Actually, he's not a man even. Why am I calling him a man? Parasite. <laughs> he's the human equivalent of a cockroach. I, I know these are harsh words, but I'm sorry. But it just the goal to do that video and just cry effectively. And it was so rehearsed. And James, leave the turtlenecks alone. It, it, mm. Turtlenecks are not flattering on most people. <laughs> just, just putting that one out there. I just, I cannot stand the guy and I think he should never have come back and I am angry I'm angry that he used my stuff I'm angry that he ripped off people I know I'm angry that he attacked people and misrepresented them he went after a writer because you know his hatred of straight white women when she isn't straight and he refused to apologize or acknowledge that like, how much self-awareness does this man not have? And cockroach. I'll call him a cockroach, because that's what he is. I'm angry that my work was stolen. I'm angry for people who have their work stolen. Changing a word does not make it your own work. Your apology was pitiful. The apology video... And I can't believe I'm making this video at 5am in the morning, but I have so much to say. I'm genuinely sick of shady people who got thousands of views and Patreon money for ripping off people 
friends. Me. Because the sheer level of ignorance and lack of self-awareness with Jane Summerton is not only off the charts, but also just, I just find it pathetic. I find him pathetic. And I'm giving him airtime. <laughs> Am I pathetic for doing this? I just, I couldn't get over it. By the way, I did watch the video, but I decided to download it first. Hence the reason it will be available. But the the thing that gets me is that James has just, it's the lack of self-awareness. It's the lack of honesty. It's the lack of accountability. It's the lack of everything and the endless excuses he's using for his seeing behavior and desperately trying not to swear james take it from me take it from everyone in your comment section take it from reddit take it from everyone no one wants you back go away because at this point you're giving chris chan vibes oh dear god i'm pit oh god i'm picturing dressed as chris chan oh no one needs to see that. I mean, people like Chris Chan, people like Blair of the Illuminati, people like Creepshow Art. Like, there's a whole list of these just vile people on the internet, and he's one of them. Go away. And show, if you're going to give money back to people and all of this stuff, show some receipts. I have no clue how you're going to do it, because I'm sure there are people that will never want to speak to you again. Including the fact that you ripped off friends of yours. You are an internet lol cow. There's nothing of substance there. You are not original. You are not the voice of the gay or the queer community, and no one wants you to be. We want you to go away. And by the way, if you're going to rip off people's work, because I don't have my original post, I have nothing. Are you going to get money to me? I doubt that. And I don't want money. I just want honesty. I'm so over internet lol cows and people, but if you want a good laugh, read the comments section and just go from there. The video was pathetic. It was uncomfortable. It was horrible to watch. It was passing the blame. And you read like a narcissist, James. You read like the ex that broke my ribs. Let's be honest here. I remember that rhetoric. Everything was someone else's fault. I cannot deal with this. <laughs> and the fact that I'm making this video at 5.10 a.m. in the morning, in my pajamas, on my phone, with this thing attached to me, I the fact that you even used H. Bombadite's title in the video was just hilarious. Because I'm not a particular fan of bread tube. I will say that I am not a fan of BreadTube. The only person I've really liked was Lindsay Ellis. Even that got boring. Because there's only so much you can say on one subject. Seriously. How, how can someone make a video like that? Completely dead turned to the camera with the moody lighting and the filter over the top to make him look amazing. Because the Kim K video filters. He, the video has been filtered. And I use filters as well. But... Unlike him, I pay for them. <laughs> because sometimes, I get eczema, so sometimes you, you guys don't need to see that, so it's easier just to <laughs> it out. But I had to laugh, because that's the free version. Um, because the video resolution is bad. But seriously, I shouldn't be laughing. I know these are low blows. I, I know. But there are content creators on the internet that are struggling to get attention, to get seen, to get views, and then there's you, who got seen, got views, got interaction, got so many things, got quoted in other people's work with misinformation, and then made up historical facts <laughs> that were not historical facts. I'm just, I just, I'm amazed no one is suing you yet. I, I will say this. I think I think there needs to be people who need to club together, get a lawyer, and sue your ass. I know this video is a rant, and I'm sorry. I'm 
sorry, I'm just, I'm angry and I shouldn't be angry. I'm like, I'm having like a really hard time in general and that's no excuse, but you know, just watching the cockroach of the internet return. The only good thing about that video is the comment section and we're taking bets on how long that video will stay up. I'm going to leave this video here and all I'm going to say is just the final words to James, go away. It's not that difficult. Get a real job. Work in Starbucks. You know, anything. So hello, uh, this is, I've, I've just got back from work and I saw something a little bit worrying on the internet. And uh, I think you can guess, I didn't expect to be making this video. And as much as I dislike James Summerton, I don't want anything to happen to him. I don't want anything to happen to him. I can criticise his content. I can criticise decisions he's made in a public forum. But I wouldn't wish harm on him. And I firmly believe the best thing for him to do would be step away from the internet. Take a long, hard look at things and reevaluate. That being said, he left a note on Twitter. I'm horrified by this note and I'm going to be censoring this note. I think if you're watching this, you know what's going to be said. So if this is a problem for you, you don't have to be here. Uh, but I'm going to read this out to you. If this message is live, it means I've scheduled it before ending things. I have videos scheduled to go out over the next couple of days. Nothing new. I just wanted Nick's portfolio of work to be available. I've left directions that any money from those videos will be donated to the Canadian Association for Prevention. They've tried very hard to pull me back, but there's simply no life for me anymore. I've lost everything. My only friend, my livelihood, my name, and it's all my own fault. The world it will be a little bit better off now. Goodbye. I'm going to say this. I know people on Reddit have done their best, and I hope, that, I hope this is just him on the internet. I hope this is just him attention-seeking. I hope this is just venting on Twitter I hope this isn't what it is. And I've said this before, I'll say it again. I don't want anything bad to happen to James. I don't want that. You can criticise someone's content. You can criticise decisions they've made in a public forum. But this is serious if it's real. And I feel bad saying if it's real, because I don't know. I don't know how much of it is attention seeking. I don't know how much of it is just woe is me. I don't know how much of it is real. And I, I've been in a relationship with a narcissist and a very long relationship in my early 20s. And it wasn't good. I recognize this kind of behavior, frets to do things. Someone is always to blame. I hope it isn't real. I hope this is just attention. If it's attention seeking, this is horrible. If it's just venting on the internet, doing threatening this kind of stuff is not good. I think the problem is James will forever be under a microscope and that's why he needs to step away from the internet. He deleted the apology video and other content. He has six people on Patreon and he could be using this in an attempt to build a redemption arc. It could all be fake. It could all just be attention seeking. It could just be venting. It could be anything. But if it is real, I hope, I know people on Reddit are doing their best and have probably done their best at this point. But if you know anything, uh, please contact the right people, non-emergency lines in Canada. And if you've been in this position yourself, please seek help. I did. I did. And I'm not going to go into details on that, but I did. And I was just lucky that I woke up on the floor and proceeded to throw up everywhere. Um, let's be real. And I do kind of make a joke out of that because it's how I deal with things in my personal life with me. And people often don't like that. 
but my opinions still stand on James, and I hope this is just internet attention seeking, I hope this is just that, I hope this is nothing more than that. Because as much, I can hate someone, but I wouldn't want anything bad to happen to them. I, I really wouldn't. I, I just wouldn't. And that's being honest. I can hate someone for the decisions they've made, the content they've made, rip, stealing other people's work, whatever. But if this is real, I hope. I hope. Uh it doesn't end badly and hasn't ended badly. I will be keeping an eye on things and um, all I'm going to say is um, I know he's watched my videos. Uh, my criticism of you James was never about you as a person. It was about the content you stole and I stand by that criticism. I stand by it a hundred and ten percent. You did steal my work, you stole countless other people's work, and in doing that, and in passing the blame, you... You made a lot of enemies, but I don't want anything to happen to you, I don't want you hurt, I don't want anything like that, and I hope you're getting the help that you need if it's real. I can criticise your actions, I can criticise everything, but, you know, if I ever ran into you, I'd buy you a drink. Because, despite what you said to me on the internet, because I don't hold grudges, I, I really don't, and I hope whatever this is, you are okay. I do have a lot to say on James, I'm going to keep saying it, and we all should keep saying it, for many reasons. I promise this YouTube channel is not going to become me pooping on James Summerton. Every time I get. There is more to my content. Watch it. It's here. He's made a comeback. He, I did a short and not many people watched it, but it hit the nail on the head. He is reaching out to people now, but uh, he's going to pay them in exposure. Yeah. And donate to Wikipedia. James, you, you are a clown. Like, in every way possible. I have no sympathy for you. The, the, the crass, self-serving apology, like sub and do the usual, by the way. The fact that you don't seem to have an original thought in your brain and your academic cringe is off the charts. I really detest people like him. I really do. He's rebranded his channel, James of Telos. Telos? T-E-L-O-S. And he did a video, The 33-Year Hunt for a Queer Killer. I'm going to put this out there, and a lot of the comments have been very right in saying this. This entire video is 20-something minutes of him paraphrasing the Christopher and Eric podcast. And I found them because of this video, so that's always good, isn't it? I will say this, like, it's literally him paraphrasing like 10 episodes or something into, into it. And the comments, one comment already stuck out to me and it hit the nail on the head. The well is already poisoned and based on this, just being you lazily paraphrasing episodes of a podcast telling the story, you clearly don't have the academic rigor to do proper research and make new worthwhile material out of existing sources. There's no reason to waste your time doing something you were not cut out for. Why watch his video when you can listen to the podcast? There is a couple of people defending him and by the way, there's archive channels of his content, which he is monetizing as we speak. He's monetizing and copywriting the archives of the content that is not his own. This man, like, well, I'm going to say this, if you're going to archive his content, don't upload it onto YouTube. Put it on Rumble, put it on Odyssey, uh, put it somewhere that is not linked to the the Googles. And someone hit the nail on the head. A cliff notes of a single podcast. Dope. And it's just content mill. It reminds me of Blair of Illuminati. She's the same. She never actually adds any new opinions or any in anything interesting to the discussion. She just reads out sources and it's kind of pathetic really. This is my thing. Like I work on the theory. Sources are great. I use sources. I always try and credit sources. But I will always make sure 
that I add my own opinion. I might disagree with something someone said. I might agree or I might want to add my own context. You add to it. You build on it. I really cannot stand BreadTube and I'm really glad that I'm not a part of it. I just like commentary and media. That's my thing. But I find it strange that this whole situation is happening as we speak. James does not have anything original to say. He does not have any ideas or faults or anything in that brain other than how can I make a quick buck? I'm going to say this. The fact that people have signed on to his Patreon, the fact that people have are supporting him still and like, oh, he apologised, he's doing better. Why watch a content farm when you can go to the sources and actually listen to people with some integrity that actually have more to say? James is cringe. He's a low cow. The cockroach. The cockroach in a turtleneck. He's not a man. He doesn't behave like one. Uh, used piece of my work and I'm bitter over that and I've said it before I say it again I'm angry over that I have every right to be it's something I wouldn't even write now <laughs> but seriously like that video is bad it's embarrassing and I can tell what he's trying to do I mean the comments on this video are just gold the defenders are quite funny so I'll cry about it uh someone put so you're paraphrasing 12 episodes of a true crime pod podcast you really haven't taken a damn thing to heart, have you? I mean, it's just the lack of self-awareness. And someone put, actually, you can't just paraphrase another source, cite it, and call it above a step above plagiarism. You still need to have your own insights and perspectives too. This is the lowest grade form of plagiarism. At best, it's just lazy and uninspiring. It, it is. Like, it really is. And James has just... It's interesting watching the views though, because some of his old videos are like 400,000, 200,000, 2.6 million on the videos he's made public, and then this video is 10k. So basically he's just going to do content farm stuff, read out other sources, and that's what his content's going to be from now on. He has nothing to offer, nothing new to say, and just, it frustrates me. I think he is cringy. He's turned off the likes to dislike ratio, so I'd love to see the actual ratios on these videos. The best thing we can do now is just ignore him. And like I've said many times, if you, he's monetizing archives of the content that he plagiarized. So I'm going to put this one out into the wilderness. Don't put them on YouTube. There is Rumble, there is Odyssey. They're smaller sites, but they're there for a very good reason. I'm pretty sure James wouldn't associate with the likes of a Rumble channel. Ugh, intellectual superiority is cringe. It's cringe, 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 cringe. And it just feels pointless. Because I don't think there is anything he can offer. There's nothing new he can say. He doesn't know how to create something. Blame everyone else for your failures again and just make content farm crap. For the lowest common denominator. Why would I watch. Like I said. Why would I watch. Someone like him. And. I didn't watch his video. From his own channel. I got it from somewhere else. Thank you internets. You know who you are. I know he's watched my videos. By the way. But no one wants you here. People are only watching your videos. To laugh at you. That's it. Go away. You can't offer anything. You can't say anything new. You created. Content farm material with no nothing new nothing to say you are a cockroach you are the cockroach of youtube and there are many people including myself who are enjoying your demise far more than we should let's be real i mean i feel bad for enjoying it as well i do watching people fall is never fun but watching someone who is vermin <laughs> destroy himself on the internet you know do the right thing do the brave thing reach out to h bomber guy content farm all you want but reach out to h bomber guy sort out this money problem drop patreon because mm, it's a thing so i'm going to leave this one here because i will rant and i promise you this is not my only content on this channel but please watch the rest because you know this is a different thing to what i've normally done 
So please like, subscribe and hit that little bell icon and I hope you enjoy what's coming. I do have a lot to say on James, I'm going to keep saying it. And we all should keep saying it for many reasons. I know this is a short video but I didn't want to go too into things and I just wanted to say that. Hello and welcome back. I have go over to my main channel, Bald Book Geek, it'll be linked down below. There's been a nightmare, which is why I've had to restart this channel and I'm gutted. Let's talk. Hi, like sub do the usual. Before anyone comes at me, I want to say this video is entirely my subjective opinion. That's it. Regardless of what's actually happened or not happened, there is no one actually responsible for this. This was always going to happen. That's my opinion. Now, James Summerton got outed as a plagiarist and in a big way, and watching people defend him was ridiculous. I got some rather spicy comments from people defending him from sort of sock puppet accounts. James Summerton, whether the infamous an aliving note on Twitter was genuine, or if it was just a lie to get some attention and sympathy, both are massive red flags. There is no if buts and maybes. Both of those events are huge red flags. It's a it's a problem. Both both of it. The thing is, it was always destined to happen. The second someone with a little more clout, a little more gusto came out, all this was gonna drop, and people saying that H Bomber guy is responsible and all of this stuff. I'm sorry, but he isn't. No one is responsible for the actions. No one wants to know what would happen. Should we coddle someone, a vile plagiarist who bullied and harassed people on the internet and sent people after people, got people's content destroyed and destroyed their reputations? There's, there's a whole list. Like, there's clearly problems here. And I will say, I wish absolutely no harm on James. I hope... I j whatever's happened, I hope he gets the help that he needs at this point. I, there's a whole thing that's gone down and this whole situation is just ridiculous. James is in a really weird position because not only did he make up pseudo history, he plagiarized works and read things out verbatim without crediting people. His blatant misogyny and other attitudes not only come through in ways that make me uncomfortable, it's always going to be a part of that thing. My belief is he should never have come back. Like, that's a whole thing. Like, he should have never have came back. He should never have done it. He should have just went away. The fact that he never reached out to people uh, up until a little while ago is very telling. And there's a whole list of other things. Like, I have no sympathy for his actions at all when it comes to destroying people. Let's be honest. A man that declared himself the voice of the queer community and then released two absolutely appalling videos that were horrible apologies. And if you want to read those apologies, I'll put a link down... Well, listen to one of those apologies. You're welcome to listen. I'll put a link down below. My thing is, regardless of who uh, called him out and finally got the truth out there that we've known for a long time, he ripped off my work. I'll link to that video as well. Regardless of the, the who, it was always going to happen this way. James Summerton is an expert at playing the victim, and there is clear level of narcissism here, in a way that is kind of reminds me of an ex from a very long time ago, in ways that make, again, makes me uncomfortable. I do have sympathy for the mental health thing, I have my own issues. But this sort of people chiming in that people are responsible, and all of this stuff no one is. Unfortunately, this whole situation was always destined to happen. There's no if, buts, or maybes, and regardless of who did it, that would always, that would always have happened. I hope James is getting the help that he needs, and you know what? The anger that I felt about him plagiarising my work has gone, because at the end of the day, James is just another internet log cow. He should have just gone away, done something else, and just... It's just the Rachel Marie situation. At least she had the sense to just... My opinions on everything that went down and all the stuff that happened. This is my thing. I'm in that really mixed place. Like, I know this... Like, basically speaking, this was always going to happen. But I'm in this mixed place where I do feel sympathy. And regardless of whether it was an actual unaliving situation or just an internet lie... They are both huge red flags for someone's state of well-being. And I've seen that behaviour firsthand. Did I take a little glee in seeing his channel get totaled? Yes. Like, that's, that's the thing, I will say. 
And I don't have any regrets over saying what I said, and I have no regrets over any situations that happened at all. I have nothing. The thing that gets me with the whole James situation, and this is being really honest, is the people jumping in, attacking people. Guys, clearly, you guys can't read the situation. People came out and they told the truth, and you know, people that called it, people that called him out on plagiarism. Oh my god, you, you're responsible for unaliving. No, they're not. You have a right to protect your work. And I did love the thing going around on Twitter. Plagiarism is not illegal. Technically, it's, it's intellectual copyright. Google is free. That's a thing. I remember how he reacted to me when I said, hey dude, you've stolen my work here. Can I at least get something? Or, you know, James for a fit sent his followers after me, called me a nobody on the internet, blocked me, and then a week later unblocked me or whatever time it was. Like, these are not the actions of a normal person. Internet log cows are a thing, and I think that's James's thing. You know, you cr you know, you can't go on the internet and make up history. You can't go up on the internet and make up facts. I mean, the whole like, there's there's so many things wrong. And regardless of the editor situation, who confirmed that James was up to that point fine on Blue Sky. I really hate that app, by the way. I hate social media with a passion. Yet I use them. My opinion still remains that this needed to happen in sense of getting called out and getting stuff said and people, the truth coming out. Simple. It had to happen. There was no if, buts and maybes. It had to happen. And sadly, I don't think James realised the consequences of his actions, but also if you cannot, if you cannot deal with stuff like this on the internet, you are in that position of where the hell am I going? What the hell am I doing? And then like, it's just... Internet, it, it's happened before, it will happen again. There have been countless content creators called out for plagiarism. I try and cite sources. I try and mention that it's this or I'm reading this article and I try and always remember to put a link. Sometimes I forget to put a link, but I will go back and put it in because, you know, brain farts and ADHD. But sometimes, like, this whole situation, I think, was purely inevitable. It was going to happen whichever way it happened and whoever it was. No one's to blame. No one's at fault. I don't know. It could have been... I don't know. Let's make up a YouTube channel. Minnie Mouse Vog Time. Calling him out with a big following and done something like that. Should have got off the internet, got the help that he needed and walked away. It's not difficult, unfortunately. And there were so many tells that the whole situation was not quite what was presented on the internet. You know, people like, well, he's got mods up and... Comments will get deleted because they're flagging things. No, you can't set it to delete a comment eight hours after the video is up to delete. You, manually, there is there was someone manually going that. There were video. There was also an edit done to one of the videos as well. So that's a thing, and that's a manual thing too. So regardless of the situation, regardless of what happened, this is just a red flag. This, all of it, the whole thing, whether it was real, whether it was lying, whether it was whatever. The, the narcissistic personality of James, the victim narrative, is old and tired, and I hope he gets the help that he needs, because clearly there are bigger issues at play here. The public crucifixion of James Summerton has been a wonderful and enjoyable thing to watch, and I firmly admit that I'm taking more pleasure in it than any person should. I, I have issues with James, and I pointed those out in one of my previous videos, and I did kind of do an immediate reaction to his response video, his apology, his apology, which is nothing more than gaslighting, and a pathetic attempt to manipulate the audience. Don't you just love a narcissist? Uh, that was a bit ranty, and I was angry, and maybe I should have taken a more measured approach. <sighs> James? has, I, I know for a fact, he's been watching people's videos, and mine included. That's interesting. And at this point in time, despite saying that he was going to pay back the revenue from the people to the people he plagiarised, uh, he has not been in contact with anyone. He's also deleted his social media, and his Instagram is private. James Summerton is honestly just the accountability factor is definitely off the chart so please like and subscribe because hi and i don't want this channel to become let's get on james summerton although i think a lot of us would pay to watch someone on james summerton <clears throat> me included i have no sympathy 
So I'm using the uh, YouTube fandom.com as a source just to confirm a few things. But he... Uh, let's be real. He's currently unprivated some of his videos. He's also trying to rewrite the narrative and history of what was caused. I'm going to put a link to the transcript for the apology video with someone talking really good about it on a website that I will just put down there so you can read it and you can read the context and it's actually really good and I'm not going to go into anything else on that one because that's a really good read and genuinely um, you did God's work because I don't know how you put yourself through that because the thought of having to watch James Summerton is just horrible. <clears throat> it is. He presented himself in a calm, collected manner with a lovely blurry video. Like, my videos are not good quality, but what the hell is going on with that video? He also blamed his plagiaristic tendencies on memory issues from a brain injury, and he tried to rewrite the narrative of previous events coming from YouTubeFandom.com. Uh, he also talked about family, and the entire first half hour of the video was nothing more than passing the buck. He even threw his family under the bus to deflect from the criticism that he caused. He also blamed YouTube, because apparently YouTube pushes white male creators more. That's not necessarily true in the algorithm. The algorithm is down to luck. There is a whole thing with the algorithm that people don't talk about and... A lot of YouTube success is down to luck. You just get picked up one day and then you move forward. He's openly tried to rewrite history. He has uh, not contacted anyone at this point in filming. He is also deleting comments from his videos. He deleted Todd in the Shadows comment. And he's deleting anyone that is bringing up certain names and certain people. Honestly... I think people need to get together and sue him. It could be done if you got a lot of people together with funds. And I'm sure if you needed to crowdfund it, many, many people, including myself, would be quite happy to donate. I'm just putting that out there because I want to see him pay. Like, and I talked about it in another video. He ripped off a small paragraph of an old blog post of mine from many years ago. And that video was a bit emotional. The sound quality wasn't very good because, you know, I was filming in a barn on my iPhone. And I was using, because I was in a rush and it was kind of on the fly, I used my TikTok microphone, which is wonderful for TikTok, but not really great for YouTube. <clears throat> I mean, there is a whole thing here that just makes me genuinely concerned. James is clearly gaslighting his audience. He is clearly trying to rewrite history. And there is a handful of people going in his comments, going, oh great, you're 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 taking you're taking we accept your part. No we don't. Like there is plenty of stuff against this guy. He's also monetized that video and he also has a Patreon again with one new member at this point in time. Where do I start with that? Where do I start with that whole thing? Anyone giving James Summerton money right now is just... Don't. Like, anyone supporting him clearly doesn't know the facts in this situation and clearly don't realise that they are being manipulated. As someone who dated a chronic narcissist in my early 20s, I can tell you... There is things here that make me uncomfortable. Let's be honest. I am... I'm just sitting here with my mouth open. So how I watched his video was I downloaded it. I didn't watch the video. I got the... I searched it. I got the URL and I converted it into MP4. I will be archiving that video on maybe Odyssey. I think it's going to be archived on Odyssey because that's all rumble, one of the two. And when I do that, I will pin a comment into, into 
somewhere and you can watch it without giving him views. There are other people though that have done brilliant reaction videos that give you all the context that you need. So you don't necessarily need to watch the video and I'm going to put a link to the transcripts and the context of what he said in the description too. I have honestly, well, to quote him when I called him out on his plagiarism of my post, I'm a nobody on the internet. No one cares about me. And then his followers came after me. And then he unblocked me a week later. It was weird. It was so weird. And all I'm going to say is, all those people that defended James till the cows come home as the gay messiah, touch grass. If you defended him, you're not far off the same level. And I am angry. I am angry that a small part of my work was stolen. I'm angry how I was treated. And I won't lie, my experience in YouTube has made me extremely wary of people because there are a lot of people that want to use you for clout. Let's be honest. Someone's always the victim. Somehow, even when they're not. This apology was designed to gaslight you. It was designed to manipulate the audience. I don't believe a word of it. And that's a controversial opinion, I know. But I don't believe a word on it. I don't believe a word he said about his family, the brain injury, and other issues that he talked about. Mental health and learning difficulties, I'm, I'm going to be very clear with my wording, are not an excuse for just behaviour. They are not an excuse to be a complete and utter detritus human being. I mean... <clears throat> I'm looking at the transcripts now, and I am absolutely shocked that he would do this. I would love to see the actual dislike to like ratio on this video. I think I think the fact that he deleted Todd in the shadows and countless other people calling him out. James Summerton is nothing more than an internet... Mm, I'm not going to swear. I'm not going to. James is nothing more than a blip in the internet. A pointless human being with a pointless existence that just wants attention. He is nothing more than a shameless attention seeker and grifter. James Summerton is a trash human being and I don't believe a word that will ever come out of his mouth ever again. I am angry at what he did to me and how he reacted. I am, because why shouldn't I be? Why shouldn't I be mad at these people? I think we should all be angry. The people that he ripped off obsessively to the point of ridiculousness just blows my mind. Run his transcripts through plagiarism checker and have fun. I just, I can't believe there are people still supporting him and if you are supporting him, you are part of the problem and you're giving this wank stain attention. And he should never have come back. The pitiful crying video that he made Woe is me, look what I did because everyone is against me that he deleted to then this video. By the way, the man doesn't know how to create videos. Like, just a side note, like, my quality isn't great, but come on. Like, the pea soup and the purple light is not good. You can get better video quality. I'm sure he's using filters, actually. James is trash. And he should go away. He should get off the internet. Like, no one wants him here. No one cares about him. We're watching a log cow. He reminds me of people like Chris Chan, desperately clinging on for attention and validation from randos on the internet. No self-awareness, nothing to say, nothing original. Just a trash human being that's grifting and using you, the audience. He is a narcissist. He's cringy. He's hopeless. He's useless. And I know those are harsh words. But I've got far harsher ones I can't say on this app. But watching that apology made me feel sick. The case of deflection, the attitude, the everything else that came out of that apology made me feel physically sick. It was too familiar, too cringy, too creepy. No self-awareness, no accountability. Just an idiot. And you know what? I'm used to being insulted on the internet by people. I am. Because, oh my god, how I don't support the current thing. 
But I've never gaslit my audience. I've never tried to manipulate you into giving me money. My channel's tiny in comparison. My main and this one. I've never tried to manipulate any of you. And it just, it just frustrates me no end. Because people be gaslighting your audience and gaslighting and changing events and changing just everything and changing the narrative that somehow it's all, oh, you're so poor and you, you know, go work in Starbucks, get a real job. Don't go on the internet and graft like an idiot. I get called a grifter because I don't like rings of power. And I was quite, ne I'm very negative about it. But my opinions were always my own. I never use someone else's words. I quoted the BBC by mistake because the brain, that one line was stuck in my head. And I put that in the thing. I actually put, <laughs> mentioned it in the comment and then I edited that two seconds out of the video because it was annoying me. I don't know. It just feels uncomfortable. It's cringy. And I just think anyone supporting him right now you really need to check yourselves. Like I said, he's not the gay messiah. He's a grifter on the internet and a talentless one at that. At least, you know what? If someone's going to grift, have some talent behind it. Because there are plenty of people that would be accused of grifting, but they're talented. He's not. This apology was designed to manipulate you, get you, pull on your heartstrings, and make you feel sorry for him. This apology was a soulless attempt to claim back what he had before by a soulless, vile human being who doesn't deserve anyone's attention or sympathy. And again, harsh words, but I'm honest. Now, I'm gonna stop this video here because this video will turn into a rant and I don't want to bore you with that. That's all I'm gonna say. And I'm gonna keep a very close eye on this twisted human being because I think we've just found Chris Chan with an IQ point. Hello and welcome back. I have, go over to my main channel, Bald Book Geek, it'll be linked down below, there's been a nightmare, which is why I've had to restart this channel, and I'm gutted. Let's talk. Hi, like, sub, do the usual. Before anyone comes at me, I want to say this video is entirely my subjective opinion. That's it. Regardless of what's actually happened or not happened, there is no one actually responsible for this. This was always going to happen. That's my opinion. Now, James Summerton got outed as a plagiarist and in a big way, and watching people defend him was ridiculous. I got some rather spicy comments from people defending him from sort of sock puppet accounts. James Summerton, whether the infamous an aliving note on Twitter was genuine, or if it was just a lie to get some attention and sympathy, both are massive red flags. There is no if buts and maybes. Both of those events are huge red flags. It's a it's a problem. Both both of it. The thing is, it was always destined to happen. The second someone with a little more clout, a little more gusto came out, all this was gonna drop, and people saying that H Bomber guy is responsible and all of this stuff. I'm sorry, but he isn't. No one is responsible for the actions. No one wants to know what would happen. Should we coddle someone, a vile plagiarist who bullied and harassed people on the internet and sent people after people, got people's content destroyed and destroyed their reputations? There's, there's a whole list. Like, there's clearly problems here. And I will say, I wish absolutely no harm on James. I hope... I j whatever's happened, I hope he gets the help that he needs at this point. I, there's a whole thing that's gone down and this whole situation is just ridiculous. James is in a really weird position because not only did he make up pseudo history, he plagiarized works and read things out verbatim without crediting people. His blatant misogyny and other attitudes not only come through in ways that make me uncomfortable, it's always going to be a part of that thing. My belief is he should never have come back. Like, that's a whole thing. Like, he should have never have came back. He should never have done it. He should have just went away. The fact that he never reached out to people uh, up until a little while ago is very telling. And there's a whole list of other things. Like, I have no sympathy for his actions at all when it comes to destroying people. Let's be honest. A man that declared himself the voice of the queer community and then released two absolutely appalling videos that were horrible apologies. And if you want to read those apologies, I'll put a link down... Well, listen to one of those apologies. You're welcome to listen. I'll put a link down below. 
My thing is, regardless of who uh, called him out and finally got the truth out there that we've known for a long time, he ripped off my work. I'll link to that video as well. Regardless of the, the who, it was always going to happen this way. James Summerton is an expert playing the victim, and there is clear level of narcissism here, in a way that is, kind of reminds me of an ex from a very long time ago, in ways that make, again, makes me uncomfortable. I do have sympathy for the mental health thing, I have my own issues, but this sort of people chiming in that people are responsible, and all of this stuff, no one is. Unfortunately, this whole situation was always destined to happen. There's no if buts or maybes, and regardless of who did it, that would always that would always have happened. I hope James is getting the help that he needs. And you know what? The anger that I felt about him plagiarizing my work has gone. Because at the end of the day, James is just another internet log cow. He should have just gone away, done something else, and just it's just the Rachel Marie situation. At least she had the sense to just... My opinions on everything that went down and all the stuff that happened. This is my thing. I'm in that really mixed place. Like, I know this... Like, basically speaking, this was always going to happen. But I'm in this mixed place where I do feel sympathy. And regardless of whether it was an actual unaliving situation or just an internet lie... They are both huge red flags for someone's state of well-being. And I've seen that behaviour firsthand. Did I take a little glee in seeing his channel get totaled? Yes. Like, that's, that's a thing, I will say. And I don't have any regrets over saying what I said. And I have no regrets over any situations that happened. At all. I have nothing. The thing that gets me with the whole James situation, and this is being really honest is the people jumping in, attacking people. Guys, clearly, you guys can't read the situation. People came out and they told the truth and, you know, people that called it, people that called him out on plagiarism. Oh my God, you, you're responsible for unaliving. No, they're not. You have a right to protect your work. And I did love the thing going around on Twitter. Plagiarism is not illegal. Technically, it's, it's intellectual copyright. Google is free. That's a thing. I remember how he reacted to me when I said, hey dude, you've stolen my work here, can I at least get something? Or, you know, James for a fit sent his followers after me, called me a nobody on the internet, blocked me, and then a week later unblocked me, or whatever time it was. Like, these are not the actions of a normal person. Internet log cows are a thing, and I think that's James's thing. You know, you cr you know, you can't go on the internet and make up history. You can't go up on the internet and make up facts. I mean, the whole like, there's there's so many things wrong. And regardless of the editor situation, who confirmed that James was up to that point fine on Blue Sky. I really hate that app, by the way. I hate social media with a passion. Yet I use them. My opinion still remains that this needed to happen in sense of getting called out and getting stuff said and people, the truth coming out. Simple. It had to happen. There was no if, buts and maybes. It had to happen. And sadly, I don't think James realised the consequences of his actions, but also if you cannot, if you cannot deal with stuff like this on the internet, you are in that position of where the hell am I going? What the hell am I doing? And then like, it's just... Internet, it, it's happened before, it will happen again. There have been countless content creators called out for plagiarism. I try and cite sources. I try and mention that it's this or I'm reading this article and I try and always remember to put a link. Sometimes I forget to put a link, but I will go back and put it in because, you know, brain farts and ADHD. But sometimes, like, this whole situation, I think, was purely inevitable. It was going to happen whichever way it happened and whoever it was. No one's to blame. No one's at fault. I don't know. It could have been... I don't know. Let's make up a YouTube channel. Minnie Mouse Vogue Time. Calling him out with a big following and done something like that. Should have got off the internet, got the help that he needed and walked away. It's not difficult, unfortunately. And there were so many tells that the whole situation was not quite what was presented on the internet. You know, people like, well, he's got mods up and comments will get deleted because they're flagging things. No, you can't set it to delete a comment eight hours after the video is up to delete. You, manually. There is, there was someone manually going that. There were video, there was also an edit done to one of the videos as well. So that's a thing and that's a manual thing too. 
So regardless of the situation, regardless of what happened, this is just a red flag. This, all of it, the whole thing, whether it was real, whether it was lying, whether it was whatever. The, the narcissistic personality of James, the victim narrative, is old and tired, and I hope he gets the help that he needs, because clearly there are bigger issues at play here. <laughs>